Ricardo, always a pleasure, but, you know, come on. I'm nude. i got Pink G on. Give it hard, mate. Come on. Uh, you're the first guess. Yes, magnificent. No one will ever forget where they were. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. Cause I'm not. Oh, I am. Your phone. Uh, your phone. Just a second. Your phone is cutting it. Should we call you on, on WhatsApp? Uh, that's all right. Yeah, this sounds... Just stay still. Fine, you there? Yeah, you're not on Bluetooth. You're not trying to fanny around with technology on me, are you? No, I'm, no, I'm on Wi-Fi. You're on what? I'm on Wi-Fi. I have a signal. I don't know if moving might help. Okay, Is stay, stay right there. Stay right there. Righto. Okay, don't move. Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm barking at you like Mrs. Mato. Sorry, mate. That's all right. I'm used to it, in other words. <laughs> all right, then. That was the sixth worst ever batting total for a black cap side in 787 one dayers. Did you see that stat where you've been one dayer in Australia since 2009? Mm -hmm. Amazing. You yeah. don't like playing it. You're one of the best teams in the world, and you've had us for 195, and you can't do the job. Uh, anyway, the good thing is that it doesn't matter because no one will remember it by tomorrow. Thank God the Queen died in terms of uh, burying that result. Mm. So you're all right. Don't worry. Don't get down on yourselves. <sighs> I mean, Come what on. is it about? Look, I tell you, Come somebody, on. I read this great tweet today, and this was the best analogy I've ever um, heard about us playing you at cricket, especially in Australia. They said, this guy said, it's like getting your older brother in a headlock for the first time and then you're realising, shit, what happens when I let go? <laughs> <laughs> that is indeed the Isn't that That's exactly what happened. Yeah. We had no right to be anywhere near that. We thought, oh, gee, it's good. If you don't know, Cairns was 32 degrees and it was 70% humidity. If anyone does know about cricket, that allows the ball to swing and do strange things. And, of course, the pitch wasn't prepared to an international standard. It's Cairns. It's a small city of 50,000 people. Um, that's what I mean. Don't worry about it. It's all fine. Just pretend it was a practice match and move forward. It's, it's okay. And it's one day Creek, one day international. It's not the T20. So mm. the world hasn't ended. It's mm. okay. okay. There's another game. Mm. Well, we don't want to play another okay? game, mate. Don't want to play another game, mate. I mean, you know, and also they stuffed us up cans, mate. I mean, that's how much you care about us. No one lives up there, do they? Yeah, but it's good you're heading into the summer to get a bit of heat and a bit of tan, you know, mm. and then that's all it is. It's just a little it's just a little warm-up tournament. It's okay. Okay. It, mate, we, we got beaten by Zimbabwe. Oh, that's right. It was the so last one all, of three, mate. You guys should maybe... Jesus, I'd hate to see how you'll go against Zimbabwe. You better not play them. I'll give it to you. Okay, right, okay. So this is the point, isn't it? Because next Friday, it'll be the night after the first bled is low. Yes. And? And it's our turn to win. We win one, we lose one. We win one, lose one. We're due for a win, whereas you lose one, win one, lose one, win one. You're due to, due to lose. Get all your money on Australia, quite clearly. It's in Melbourne, and the reason it's on a Thursday night is because they'd rather watch in Melbourne Club AFL than watch the, the greatest brand in world rugby play. I, 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 know, I, I know that New Zealand rugby and yeah. Silver Lake think they're taking this game to the world, but that doesn't appear to me yeah. as though that they have the impact yet they want. Now, do you guys get Thursday night footy, which is a big hole in the uh, hole in the schedule last night for all blokes in Australia who are used to sitting down watching either AFL or NRL on a Thursday night? I had a listener ring us today, said, why can't they play? And I had to tell him, hey, mate, the blender stays on next Thursday, they'll be all right. He had to sit down and talk to his wife about what colour nail polish she was getting today. She was wondering which blue, shade of blue. And this is what happens if you don't have footy on a Thursday night. So it's a good thing. Yeah, it will bring families okay. back together. All right, that's a good thing. It'll actually. keep relationships together. Okay, well, but first, it... quite simply, the, 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 the thing is, Melbourne's the home of AFL, and obviously uh, Australian rugby gets playing Melbourne on that weekend. It didn't notice that there might be semi-finals on, and they've been shuffled to Thursday night because it's important when two suburbs of Melbourne play each other in a semi-final, they'll get a hundred thousand people to the MCG, so they can't quite fit in a quite a large rugby game called the Bledisloe Cup. It's mate, we're here in Australia go. What? No one can believe that a Bledisloe Cup is played, being played on a Thursday. It's it's quite extraordinary, but this is the modern face of the money game, isn't it? Just you see, I, my my young producer is twenty four years old, and he and he doesn't live with his beautiful girlfriend. But when they sit there at, together at night, and there might be a game of sport on, and he wants to watch that game of sport, you're a man of much marriage experience. So when the when the topic changes to blue lipstick or blue whatever nail polish or something, how do you deal with that? 
well, you just turn the volume up louder. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the volume down on your partner and turn the volume up on the TV. What? What? Right. What? No, right. hold on. No. No. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's going on in millions. Well, uh, he'll, he'll learn. Actually, if he was an Australian at that age, he would never have uh, seen an Australian victory in the Bledisloe Cup. Oh, uh, see, we that's true. We don't know true. what it looks like. Yeah, that's true. But is, yeah. it, is it kind of like, can you, can you, have you trained yourself? Like, you know when you work in radio and... You know, you, you learn to listen in both ears, right? You've got the news feed coming in this ear, you've got the program coming in the other ear. It's the best thing any man can ever learn because you can still concentrate on the game while the other ear, you can actually, at the exact right moments, go, hmm, yes, love that. Yeah, brilliant, let's do it. Timing. And that's, that's what experience gives you. And after you've been hit a few times by uh, threats, uh, you learn and you learn. And that's, that's why these young blokes can go know it all, but they'll soon find out that they don't quite. Their wife will tell them enough times that they don't know it all and um, the world will continue on and it'll be safe. It'll be a safe place. And that's what sheds were made for, to, to yeah. uh, you know, just got to check a bit of stuff down <laughs> down in the shed. So I hope that... Oh, the shed, shed's a thing in New Zealand, isn't yes. it? Yes. You guys all have sheds? Yeah, man, honestly. Yeah. Oh, good. And, the, you know, the key to the shed, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Martin out of Brisbane, Triple M, it's a man show. They talk about man stuff. I know that's not allowed in New Zealand, of course, but, you know, the thing about a shed, you can never make it too comfortable for them because otherwise they will want to come and sit in it. So you always have it a little bit rough, like there's not really a seat. Okay, you might get the fridge in there. The door doesn't quite shut properly. You've just got to actually mm. set it up so that if she looks at it, she goes, well, that's a bit stinky and a bit grubby and I don't want to go in there. If you make it really comfortable, you've lost the shed. Well, my stool's comfortable. Other than that, you've got to sit on a saw stool. So, and it's just a little bit too high for Mrs. Mardo's bum. So she goes, oh, oh. She's either got a milk crate or a saw stool. She goes, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and she'll turn around. It took her six years of my last shed for her to actually enter the door because she'd poke her head and go, oh, Ugh. and walk away. So, That's and that is how you come to be married for 30 years successfully. There you go, Lachlan. See, Lachlan, is, all right, AFL, NRL. I know that Brisbane, you got a team in, and I'm not going to, you know, I mean, your, your NRL side did a Warriors at the end of the season. How big is the noise as the Lions this weekend? Oh, mate, there's a lot of naval gazing. Oh, in terms of the rugby league, there's a lot of naval gazing going, hold on, we should be the premiers every year. So they're investigating and stuff like that. Whereas the AFL tonight, everything's... Uh, do you understand the demographics of Australia? Because Brisbane's quite warm and Victoria and Melbourne's quite an awful place to live uh, for about 12 days of the year, we have probably 40,000 people moving up every year from Victoria. And they keep their heads down because they know Queensland's a rugby league, rugby union state. They keep their heads down until they have popped up all over the place in the last week. Everyone wants to talk AFL all of a sudden. So that's what you need, mate. If your team's not winning, no one wants to talk about them. So AFL in Brisbane has actually become the premier code for a week. So it's quite interesting to watch. And go the Lions, even from... Okay, finally then, Kyrgios, and, you know, watching him after, and I've been on the K train all week, mate, but watching him smash those rackets, one of the things that occurred to me while he was doing it is that, listen here, you twat, how many kids would love one of those rackets to be playing with? I would just, I hope that in his dreams that one of those rackets turns into Chucky the doll and just starts smashing him across the head one night. <laughs> oh, gee, you put a bit of thought in it. Sorry, mate, I've, I'm still bitter about the cricket. Sorry, Did you mate. Notice... Sorry, mate. <laughs> all right, so he smashed the one, then he went back to his bag, smashed another one. I swear there was if there was a third one and a fourth one he would have grabbed them, but he just gave up. But wouldn't it be nice nice to have signed them, handed them to someone in the crowd, and then yeah. they could have put it in their shed and gone, What's that? What's that broken racket? Oh, Nick Kyrgios. Oh right, oh, that'll be worth money. He just left them lying there on the ground. No regard. Yeah, but also so what he does. I heard yeah. him say, uh, Sorry, keep going. Yeah. No, I, afterwards he he made, in his press conference, I don't know if you saw it all, he he said uh, the problem is I've got a problem winning. I've, I've won too much in my life. And I thought, no, you haven't, mate. No, you won't, no, you <laughs> he said, I've been, I've been winning since I was 10 years of age, and uh, it just comes so easily to. Well, how is he? He's won nothing. Nothing. Zero. Yeah. So, what do you mean? Sorry, what have you done and what have Zero. you won? Oh, no, I won that tournament in Texas. Yeah, which, oh, that, oh, that's right. Yeah. So, mm. who, you know, oh, yeah. No one else playing in it. Disappointing. All right, finally, anyway, you're on the you? island, mate, because you're on the island, because once again, it's one of those weekends where you're going to be building all weekend, right? Uh, that is correct. It's virtually the last weekend, and then uh, uh, we got renters coming in, so I might actually make some return on it, my investment. So, so I've got to make it beautiful for everyone and finish painting and stuff like that. So, but that's boring. You don't want to hear about that. Is that the you main know, house or is that the other that. house? Do you are you allowed to live in the main house, or do you have to go and live in the other house when you've got visitors? 
Yeah, I've got a little house. It's virtually a shed that we live in. And then when other people uh, come, they let it. We poke our head up there occasionally. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. It's funny. funny. You must find it a funny situation, but I don't have a house in Brisbane anymore. No. We come over here and fix, fix things up and catch lots of fish. All right. All right. Always a pleasure, mate. Thank you so much for doing this for us because we know that you got busy and you're on the boat. All of that stuff. Greg, have a lovely weekend. We'll talk no, you, no, you do. Do you want to talk any cricket, any more cricket? You're right. Sorry, that line. You you got to no? stand still, mate. The line keeps. Oh, sorry. Cut, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, cut the Good luck in the bladders, lad. You'll need it. <laughs> See you, mate. That is our man Greg Martin from the Island. Yeah. Devlin. Yes. Yes. Can we do it? The platform. Oh, just give it to us and give it to us again, and after that, give it to us again, and then give it to us again after that. We've been a one day since 2009. Oh, the, the Chapel Hadley. It means so much to us as cricketers. Well, why don't you play like it then? Every single New Zealand cricket fan watching last night knew. Every one of us knew. 118 for, set, for eight. Or 117 for eight. As soon as they started, as soon as those last two started clipping some runs, as soon as they started clipping some runs, we all knew, didn't we? We just... I started texting you saying, mate, we're out for 140. What an exaggeration. Yeah. 120. Yeah. We only got two-thirds of that. 82 people. Get the stat. The sixth worst ever batting total for the Black Caps in any one day we have played, dating back to the 1970s. And this is what our beloved captain had to say afterwards. Yes, yeah, so something to, to build on set. and looking forward to that last match. What? Something to build off? Looking forward to it? Dude, resign the white ball captaincy. You don't care anymore, mate. You checked out, it's obvious. Kane Williamson, to me, is the guy that's handed his notice in at work and he still has to hang around for the next three months. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? Uh, you know, you've lost, it. mentally you're gone. No commitment there. Hey, but when I say that, I don't mind. Uh, you know, you've hit 25 centuries, 13 one-day centuries. It's beautiful what you've done for our game, what you've done for the team. But you can't rest on that, and you can't. That, that isn't it. The stats mean nothing when you're playing today. The stats are something that you look at after your career. Right now, mate, you are ineffective as a captain. You are uninspired. We can't even be bothered concentrating in the field. Devin Conway last night tried to run you out, and the commentators asked Ian Smith. He's sitting there in the booth. They say, "What happened there?" He said, "He's ball watching. He's just gazes somewhere else." Really? It's the second of three one tails. After getting pinked in the first one. Listen, if you don't care about the Chapel Hadley and it means nothing to you, well, just say it, mate. What I hate is I just hate the lies and just the fudging that goes on. I mean, this guy could just be reading off the same song sheet that after we lost the three tests to England. It's exactly the same quote. Yes, yeah, so something to, to build on set and looking forward to that last match. If you really had, if you really felt anything for New Zealand cricket, us fans, and that team, and that cap you wear, then you would actually come out and you'd say, listen, we need to apologise to everyone to do with New Zealand cricket after that. That is shameful. That's embarrassing. At least, it, at least we'd all sit there and go, yeah, 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 totally agree, mate, you bunch of fannies. But hey, I still like you, and go out and, go out and do it again. Oh, no. No, 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 no. All we just get is the PR claptrap. It's just, it's boring, mate! Starting to sound like what Okay, let us go to the US Open where Schwung Higher Honkin Tech is playing. Sorry. Sorry? What? Who? Well, you, every time you say it, you say it, you, you've got to. Schwantek. That's how I was told to say it. Okay, well, let's go to our man Dave Worsley in New York because he knows how to. How do you pronounce that name, Dave? <laughs> well, the crowd were just chanting "Ega, Ega, Ega." <laughs> uh, that's just, that's, that, I think it's quite funny. Uh, that's her first name, but uh, her surname is Schwartek. Schwartek, Lachlan. Schwartek. Schwartek. Well, you got it Lachlan. wrong as well. Okay, well, yeah, but yeah. that's the first time in my life. Okay, Dave. So you got anything wrong? Yeah, thank you. One set all, um, and uh, Sabalenka won the first. Igor won the second, we're two all in the third. The winner to play, Jabir, who lost in the Wimbledon final. Okay, so what happens from here? And Jabir, can she clinch one, finally? I mean, what a gift this would be yeah. to the African nation, to you know, to and to every single young woman in the world who plays tennis, that somebody could come from that part of the world and win a Grand Slam. 
Oh, exactly. It, it would be huge. You know, she was expected to win the Wimbledon final, but of course lost to that uh, woman that you know so well, Ryder Keener, mm-hmm. who lost in the first round here and got put on court 21. Uh, yeah, so I mean, look, Ons Jabba has a very good chance. She's playing very well. Nothing too spectacular. In fact, she's not doing all of her spices and dices and everything like she usually does, but she's uh, still winning and defeated Garcia uh, very easily in that first semifinal. This one, though... I still feel that uh, Schwartek will come through and win it against Sabalenka. Uh, she just seems to come back by, I don't, I don't know why, sometimes she just seems to keep on fighting and keep on winning. Uh, Sabalenka, the more powerful of the players, uh, and obviously the one that they don't want to win because she's from Belarus, I'm sure they won't admit that. But, you know, it just sounds better when you have Poland against uh, Tunisia in the final. And, uh, of course, Schwartek has actually won the French Open twice. So she knows what to do when it comes to actual Grand Slam titles. All right, dude. So we won't be here, um, and uh, we got uh, been given the Monday off by the boss, so we'll be watching this at home. But you've got Arud, who you've been picking the whole way through against the K-Train, catching off. And then Alcaraz against TFO. I was stunned yesterday. Uh, that match began two hours before we went on air. We left at 6 o'clock last night. It was still going. My pick is the American boy wins all from here. What do you think? I think uh, they'd love that because they've lost ratings tonight, that's for sure. When you look at the uh, women's semifinals, and usually the crowd's a bit bigger too, uh, you know, if he goes through to the final, that means they're onto a ratings winner because they love him, the energy, the power, etc. However, I am still, you know, going with Christian Ruud, who can make the world number one, so can uh, Alcaraz if he actually manages to wake up in time because that's just, I actually think it's a bit poor. Uh, not his fault for winning in five games, but when we start so late and finish so late, it does affect everybody. We're not just talking about uh, we're not just talking about the players. We're talking about the physios, the umpires. There's no there's no lines people at this tournament. There's all electronics, the ball kids, uh, the drivers, the everything. There's a lot more people than just those out in the court, and it's just the egos of some of these Grand Slam uh, bosses who just go, "Oh, look, I came later than you. Our tournament went later than yours." Not that they're actually here watching it. It's going to be a brand new winner in the men's regardless, and you're saying that uh, you think the top seed's still going to hang on there in the women's? Yeah, I, I think so, even though she's just gone down 2-3. <laughs> yeah, put my foot in that one. But, uh, yeah, no, it, I still actually think Swartek will come through. She just seems to be able to fight through to win. And then the men's, yeah, I, I, I think I will go out and risk and go Casper uh, uh, Root to win. But, hey, it would be fantastic if TFO did win. I don't understand a word that he says because I'm obviously too young. Uh, but, yeah, he's... Uh, He's fantastic to watch. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for all the coverage that you've given us over the last week or so. I thoroughly appreciate it. Brilliant. No worries, mate. You owe me coffee or lunch. I do. I certainly do. Don't worry about that. Sean does as well.